Ooh, footprints. Boot prints in the sand. One of the soles appears to be more worn than the other. That's good. To know. There's something in the air and unnatural buzzing. The tunnel collapsed. You'll have to find a way around so I can't get up there. Okay. I'm gonna zoom out. Let's see. It's getting louder, the buzzing sound. There it is again, like a swarm of hornets buzzing under your scalp. A strange tingling you can almost Should I smell. not be running? Lieutenant, do you feel something? No. What do you mean? A strange tingling? I don't feel it, but we should still be careful. There were footprints back there, and I'm pretty sure they were fresh. You don't feel anything? No, but you are the sensitive one. I saw the footprints too, the right sole worn smooth. Looks like our suspect. If she isn't here, we need to plan our next step carefully. What do you mean? Once we detain a credible suspect, who knows what the Union and the Wild Pines will do. We'll set in motion events we have no control over. Okay. It will upset the balance of power in Martinez. The deadlock between the company and the Union will destabilize. Keep calm. Go over the whole situation in detail. We've met the union leader, but haven't gotten any info from him. Maybe we should talk to him more first. You're right. However corrupt he may be, nothing happens in Martinez without him knowing. We might have to dirty our hands, but... So should we not go find Ruby right now? In this case, we can't afford to be squeaky clean. We were running the serial number on the victim's armor. You think we should finish running it now? Maybe you're right. It might not be as useful later. Okay. It's a minor point. Don't worry too much about this. There are bigger fish. But you're warning me. Do you think whatever happens will affect our cryptozoologists? You mean Morel? I don't see how cryptozoology and the murder investigation are connected. But the situation in the city will get tense for everyone. How bad do you think things could get? Well, we are not responsible for what we can't predict, are we? I don't think the entire city will be raised to the ground. Why? He smiles in the dark. Let's try not to worry, he thinks. I'm concerned, Kim. If you can't predict it, there's nothing you could have done. What do you think is waiting for us there? I think I see a cavern. Maybe more cellars? I think we've been careful enough. We still have the element of surprise. So, I've been... mm. I wouldn't be so sure. You haven't exactly been sneaking. Yeah. Or maybe not. (laughs) Either way, once we go deeper, there will be no turning back. Okay, okay. I didn't think this was going to be the end game, but apparently I I was told the game warns you when you get to the point of no return. So, apparently we shouldn't do this, is what I'm understanding here. We should come back later. Okay. Well, I know that's there. Oh, where was the other building? Oh, the body's here. We need Kim to deal with that. A man lies on the boardwalk. His limbs bent and neck turned at an unnatural angle. Right next to him is an empty bottle of spirits. In his cramped hand, a chewing gum wrapper. Hold on. The lieutenant leans over the corpse and examines his face. Two glassy eyes stare back at him, void of any signs of life. Looks like he's been dead for a while. I'm surprised no one found him before you came along. He stands up and shivers as a gust of wind blows through his bomber jacket. Who was this man? Looks like one of the locals. He'd have to know this spot to come here. You don't just walk over here. He looks south the way you came. But that's just a lazy assumption. What do you think? A dead working-class man with a bottle in his hand? Don't deceive yourself. You know who this is. 
It's the working class woman's missing husband, dead on the boardwalk. The woman you met at the book stand? Why do you think it's her husband? The leather jacket points at the man's clothes. It matches her description perfectly. Bottles all around him point at the tear. She said he was drinking somewhere in Marnay. The library card, he was supposed to return a book. All of the above? Let's do leather jacket. The bright blue lining? Well, he's definitely someone's husband. Oh, he points at a golden ring on the man's left hand. All right, what about the library Looks card? Like one of, that's a dead working. The woman you met at the book. I can't see a book. So he took the book to the library, then came back and thought, I'll have one. I'll have one drink before I get home. The view from the lookout is beautiful. Was it just one drink, though? Damn it. He's definitely someone's husband. What do you think happened here? Death by misadventure. He slipped and fell through the boardwalk. A truly unfortunate accident. If it wouldn't have been for that bench, he'd be alive. The bench? Why the bench? Because the floorboard? Could it be related to the lynching and Ru or Ruby? No, I don't see anything that points in that direction. For now, let's treat this case as a simple, albeit sad, accident, and relate it to the murder case. Yes. But what if there's a killer on the loose? Two suspicious deaths in such a short time frame. We should consider the possibility that we're dealing with a sequence killer. A sequence killer? There's nothing that connects those two bodies. This is a completely different case. An accident. What if all of this is staged? He could have seen something that night in the yard. What if he witnessed something? All of this could be staged. We don't know the exact cause of death. It's possible, but let's take it step by step. We still haven't identified the man. You think he was drunk? Point at the bottle. Oh, yes. What about alcohol poisoning and liver failure? Some symptoms of acute alcohol poisoning could have definitely played a role here. Severe confusion, respiratory depression, unpredictable behavior. But I think that death arrived through head trauma, not liver failure. What about the kebab? What about it? The deceased ate some kebab. It's probably from a nearby place, maybe in the box. Sometimes a kebab is just a kebab. Someone should be held responsible for this broken boardwalk. It's dangerous. They'll seal this place off after the news reaches the coalition officials. I doubt that they have enough resources to actually repair the boardwalk. Not that sealing it off would keep anyone away. All it does is keep the city council's hands clean. He smiles sourly. It does seem to be a pretty straightforward misadventure, although there's still a question of identifying the body. What should we do with him? From where I stand, I can see two options. We either take the case and follow the leads to identify the body on our own, or we report back to the station and leave this for our colleagues to handle. What about a field autopsy? A field autopsy isn't necessary if the cause of death doesn't appear to be criminal, and... This looks like a simple accident to me. I'd say we should just write down head trauma and leave it at that. Let's keep this detour as short as possible. The sooner we get back to finding Ruby, the better. But isn't that kind of sloppy? Maybe, but we don't really have much time or resources to spare. The guys at processing will take care of the rest. Well, we should finish this. Take the case. All right. We should first examine the library card you found. Then we can call the station from my kinema. Let them know we are taking the case. Do I need to examine the library card? This is... Oh, so, oh! I have stuff in here. <laughs> White envelope. Handed to you by Everett. There are some legal documents. Oh. You take the legal documents out of the envelope. A 12 to 40 month construction period and the zoning plan. In the addendum. Look at the zoning plan. The youth center cuts into the ocean like the bow of some great modern ship. Apparently, it's going to cover most, if not all, of the street and the square between the existing houses. It's three stories tall. Kim, what do you think of this? I'm no property lawyer, but it looks fine. I like the print size. They're not selling or leasing anything. It's not a perfect solution, but... He shrugs. How else are you going to build something 
It's always inconvenient to build things, and citizens inevitably have disagreements over such construction projects. But there's no other way. Try to find a loophole. Logic check. Okay. Close. You take the legal documents out of the envelope. There is no loophole. The simple truth is, the current residents are going to lose their street access, and for the next 12 to 40 months, their lives will be dominated by constant construction noise right next door. So they get the street back? What are the ramifications of this? Once the construction starts, it'll probably take a few months, a year maybe, for even the most stubborn occupants to get tired of living like this. After that, they'll sell their property for cheap and move out. Look, Cam, point to the photocopy. These people are going to have to move away. Can we do something about it? I should have seen it. The lieutenant frowns as he reads over the document again. Evra probably has eyes on us, but we could try to get other people to sign this instead of those listed. Or you could forge their signatures yourself. By the time he finds out, we'll already be gone. So if we forge the signatures, it's not legal? My interfacing. Ooh, Everett's people could be watching you. Get other people to sign it instead. Okay, put the documents away. What's this? Book. Folded library card. This is what I wanted. The library card is folded into two and still slightly wet to the touch. The front side reads, Central Jamrock Public Library Card, issued to Billy Mejon, expires July 53. Billy is a unisex name. Could be the deceased, or his family member. Look inside. Whoever owns this card is an avid reader. You find a list of books written in blue pencil. Radio thriller. Stand a little less between me and the sun. The last one in the list is The Glinton Curve by M. Theobald. A library stamp indicates that the book has been returned. Most of these titles seem to be in the sci-fi genre. Some thrillers, too. Look at the backside. If lost, please return the card to the library. Dial 005-02-55211 or visit us at Moreau Street, 78, Jamrock. Business hours, 900 to 1800. Good. We should give them a call from my kinema. See if we can learn anything about Billy Mejean. Put it away. Are these all books? Oh yeah, I bought, I bought all the books and then the board game. Primer for small kids. What the heck? First grade in primary school? Humanoid teddy bear is pushing a wheelbarrow full of letters. He's not doing a good job. Letter S is dangerously dangling from the cart while E is fall has fallen off a long time ago. Children should pay more attention. What is this? You hold in your hand the colorful primer. The title reads, A Primer for Small Kids. There's a bear involved. Exactly what I need. Mm. This book will show you the score. Get you oriented with those basic concepts you appear to be hazy on. The anthropomorphic bear will give you the lowdown of your life. On what? The alphabet. Flip the pages. Every page has one word designating one letter of the alphabet with a faded illustration. Most of them are scientific and cultural principles. It goes as follows. Let's do this. A is for azimuth. B is for boreas. C is for cosine. D is for diamite. E is for ellipse. F is for phlogiston. G is for gamut. I don't even know these words. H is for homeboy. <laughs> I is for econ. J is for Yura. K is for collapse. L is for laudanum. M is for myriad. N is for nadir. O is for aureole. P is for perihelion. Perihelion? Nods stoically. <laughs> Q is for quasar. R is for rhododendron. S is for sinus. T 
is for tree color. U is for ultra. V is for vector. W is for var height. X is for xylophone. Y is for ustava. Z is for zenith. That's it? That's it. You know the alphabet now. Kim, I know the alphabet now. <laughs> Good. I also know the alphabet. <laughs> That's it. That's all he has to say. It is a very useful skill to have, he thinks, for all sorts of life activities, like reading and... And? Put the book away. Okay, I'm not going to mess with the other ones. <sighs> oh, okay. All right. So is there nothing else back here? How do I leave? Right. Can I leave? That's the church, right? Where was the building that I ran into? With the mural in front of it. Was it this one? Did I, like, walk right past it? I was like, oh, hello, sir. Hey, it's the Sunday friend. Can I get up there? Where are you going? Going around. I'm going around and around and around. Okay. I was supposed to ask about these traps. I thought the local kids would have something to say about the traps. Oh, here we go. A row of ghostly shades facing the crumbling wall, with another seven shades standing ten meters from them. A single person stands on the sideline. Kim, who was in this execution? I don't know. I don't know who died here, lined up beside that horrible wall. It could have been any of the parties involved in the revolution. Perhaps the ones executed here were the loyalist conservatives killed by the communists at the start of the civil war. Or it could have been the communists put to death during the last stretch of the conflict by the coalition forces. Remember what Trent Heidelstam said about Feld? What if it was the Feld personnel when their assets were being seized by the revolutionaries? Another likely scenario. The lieutenant nods. You mentioned coalition forces. Could it have been them against the wall? Yeah. It's very unlikely the coalition forces were the ones who died here. They were always the last ones against the wall. To be honest, if a coalition member was anyone in this situation, it was a commandant, the superior giving the orders. Leave. A cold sea wind blows away the figures. Behind this building, the other one, once filled with engineers and designers of Feld Electric, now collapsed and dead. But for some rats, you feel drawn, for some reason, to the faded mural again. Again? A row of ghostly shades facing the crumbling Why wall, again? With another seven shades standing ten meters from them. A single person stands on oh. the cold behind this building, the other one, once filled with engine. He means the mural on the other building I feel drawn to. So that would have given me another point to get in there. What's this? Door, a building, a hiding place, could the instigator be inside? Let's go talk to you. As you approach, the man turns and greets you with a polite wave. Maybe you should have saved. He appears completely at ease, like a common holiday maker. Ah, super. It's the officer. I was not expecting to run into you again, but things have a funny way of turning out, no? What brings you down to the scenic Martinez coast? I was actually wondering what you're doing here. Hmm. Well, that's très simple. I was visiting the fishing village just north of here. They have applied for a series of microloans to revitalize the old market. And well, I wish to see the situation firsthand. Oh, interesting. And then, well, I had some extra time on my hands, so I decided to stroll down here. It's quite peaceful, isn't it? Yeah, it's lovely. Yes. There's nothing like a stroll along the coast to lift one's spirits. The man takes a deep breath. You do know there was a mass execution right over there. <laughs> really? Here? How can you be sure? Mm, sort of a gift I have. I can reconstruct things that happened in the past. High-end detective stuff. Ah, a very useful gift for a police detective, I'm sure. 
Fascinating how much history is contained right here. If only one knows where to look for it. You feel like there's something you could say here. If only you really knew what was going on. Actually, there's something else I wanted to ask you about. Ah bon? I'm all ears, officer. I need your help for a committee I'm trying to assign la responsabilité. My friend, if it's la responsabilité you're after, I have good news for you. There's no need to form such a committee because it already exists. God, of course it does. These moral intern types. The Comité de Responsabilité de Revachol, it acts as a sort of clearinghouse for coalition activities. To put it simply, they are the ultimate arbiters of la responsabilité in this part of the world. Yes, this is just the sort of reasonable authority you're looking for. I would offer to connect you with the committee myself, but alas, I am not actually in Martinez. What? Where is he then? You knew there was something strange about this one. He's an astral projection, a bureaucratic phantasm. He's speaking figuratively. He means he's not in Martinez in his official capacity. Attempt to stick your hand through his astral form. <laughs> <sighs> Your hand bumps against the man's solid, if somewhat fleshy chest. Yes, I was wondering the same thing. What are you doing? He said he wasn't really here. I had to make sure he wasn't an astral projection. No, no, don't be silly. We're simply speaking in an informal capacity. Officially, I am still in La Delta, preparing for an upcoming conference on fuel oil derivatives. That's why it would be extremely irregular, or potentially even inappropriate, for me to intercede with the committee concerning a district I'm not officially in. But this is an urgent matter. I need to get in touch with the committee. Yes, you've made your persistence quite clear. Under normal circumstances, I would have to insist you go through the regular channels. No, no. You can't let them give you the runaround. But if you have information of a vital interest, they might be willing to entertain an exception. In which case, I would advise you to contact them via Coalition Worship Archer. Why do I need to go through Archer to speak to the committee? You see, in addition to being an airborne artillery platform, Coalition Worship Archer is also the linchpin of the Coalition's surveillance and communications infrastructure in Revachon. So it's watching us too? And listening! It has the most objective vantage point in the entire city. Not to mention a vast array of radio, photographic, and meteorological monitoring instruments. I find it a great comfort to know there are benevolent powers watching over all, in strict accordance with the Wayfarer Act and the bristol Muna Convention. How does one go about contacting a coalition worship? Hmm, this is quite the problem. Very tricky. Of course, the Archer has orders to fire on any unidentified aerostatics that might approach it, so it might be safer to get in touch from the ground. But in that case, you would require a radio transmitter capable of broadcasting on coalition frequencies. And that kind of technology naturally isn't typically available for non-coalition use. Yes, it is a bit of a conundrum. I suppose there might be some way to circuit bend your way onto those frequencies, but you'd have to be one of those techno tinkerers to do it. Do you know of any of these tinkers? Unfortunately not, no. I don't have the pleasure. I am merely a representative of the coalition government, not very well versed in technology. But you? Sounds like something that programmer we met in the church might be able to help with. I'm ahead of you, Kim. I got it. Let me just say that I have complete confidence in the RCM. I'm sure you'll figure something out. I, one of those other questions was, is that legal? And I thought we'd get to ask more questions. <laughs> Thank you for your time. Always my pleasure to be of assistance to the RCM. Godspeed. And if we don't meet again, bonne chance. So since we determined that this was a pretty spot. There's no way the perp is in here, officer. Look how scarred the boards are. All attempts to pry them off have failed. Can I try to get in, though? Not this time. The opposition is insurmountable. But I like the spirit. Have some points. It's lonely and cold without points. 
Are you actually going to give me points? And dangerous. Dangerous too. <laughs> Kim, you think she's in there pointing at the boarded up building? The suspect? God, I hope not. I can't see a way in. Though many have tried. Nothing more to do here. Okay. So, he was at... I gotta find a date spot. We gotta go on dates. Okay. There's nothing else to do with the traps at this time. They're all just lying around, gathering dust and rainwater. Can we move, please? Can we go this way? No. Okay, alright. Is there anything this way behind the church? Did I look? No, it won't really let me <laughs> go back that way. Does Kim know what this is? An old door worn by elements Interfacing. guards the depot. The wind has blown a sand dune in front of it. The door hasn't been opened in a long while. You see a handle. Could this structure have been used to take the shot? From here to the whirling, I can't see how. The church is in the way. Okay. No, we're gonna get this open. <laughs> how is my interfacing? I thought I put. Yeah, I've put points into it and I can't put any more into it. <sighs> okay. I don't know. There must be something story related to get in there. Something I can think of. There's a seagull. Did I need Kim to investigate anything up here? No, we investigated this. Oh! Relay tower coordinates boat traffic in the bay. Barely. Alright, so let's go into the church. She can interface with the coalition. Oh! The buoy! I was told that was fixed. And I didn't look for it this time. I was told... Lassia's buoy was fixed. Aha! There's a rock over here. A metal and plastic contraption bobs up and down amidst the trembling reeds. At first, it just looks like trash. But if you look closer... That over there must be the boy class you told us about. The one she hid her passport in. We should take a look. Yes, spindly extremities have been here. Snap the cords keeping the boy in place. A little longer and it will be floating somewhere out in the open sea. What? Moves across the water, leaving no traces. You're cold again, as always. Yeah, but who or what is this? Splendor. I feel really strange just now. Mm-hmm. No further response. All his concentration is on the contraption. We're lucky it's still here a little longer. It would have floated away. Indeed. Let's see what's inside. All right, pick it up. The boy is not tied to anything. The cords dangling from the bottom really have been torn or cut. You lift it out of the water easily, noticing how light it is. Examine the plastic ball. The number 11 has been written on the yellow plastic. It hasn't been in the water for very long. But it's already discolored and slimy with silt. A latch holds it close, but only just barely. The brittle metal of the latch has cracked. Simple construction. Very unsafe. Shake it? There's something in there, splashing around. Sniff it. It smells like you would expect it to smell. A concentrated version of the coast. Salt, industrial slop and decay. The water this side of the peninsula is cleaner. Actually, it smells a little salty. Open it. A shot glass's worth of seawater pours out. Some algae and nothing else. Well, damn. No documents. Who do you think took them? I have no idea. Lieutenant taps his foot, frowning. It's a minor quirk. We know what was in it anyway. Or think we do. This is a small loose end either way. Not important, I hope. Maybe it was Kalase's enemies, which means she's in danger. Could be. We should keep an eye out. <sighs> Nothing more for us to do here. Let's go. You could ask the miss what she thinks. Later, if you have the time. Though you doubt she'll tell you much at this point. Let the buoy be. 
All right, now we can go into the church. <laughs> I was like, ah, oh, that was important to remember. Glad we got that. Glad that got fixed. I've been told that there is some other bug that we may or may not encounter with the church. Oh, but there seems to be several workarounds for it. From what I have read, so hopefully we'll be fine. Into the church. Everyone's still dancing. Okay, I'm gonna take this flashlight off because it's bothering me. Maybe, maybe. I gotta actually click on it. Here, there we go. Ooh, thought. Cold wind blows in from the broken gallery and makes your skin crawl. Can we go in it? The mother of humanism stands above. Yes, I wasn't sure before, but this must be the DeLorean Church of Humanity in Martinez. It's called the Small Pinewood Church in some records. You knew of this place? It's a minor landmark, not easy to find. Most maps misplace it. It was built not long after Revachol's founding, 300 or so years ago, by first generation settlers. What else do you know? There used to be seven stiff churches on the coast. Les Setsa, they called them. The Seven Sisters. Only one remains. The rest were burnt in the revolution or used for building materials. We should be respectful here, although the building appears to be deserted. I do not believe we'll find the instigator here. Something else, perhaps? He looks around the machinery. Respectful? Is the lieutenant a follower of DeLoreanism? A pang of guilt? The lieutenant is leaving something out. Do you know why this was abandoned? I have a theory, yes. There was a police raid a while back. I heard the place was shut to pieces. Who conducted this raid? Well, your station was involved, I hear. Although I can be sure. How come the lieutenant isn't sure? Is this confidential information? You're not sure. Three precincts were involved in the raid, and people say Precinct 41 was one of them. I don't remember being here. You don't remember anything. Look around. I guess I could have been here? I'm sorry. I'm not saying you were. It was a clandestine operation. I don't know anything about it. Why it was conducted or who participated. I try not to pry into extra district matters. If I was here, I should find out what I was doing. Good luck. You will not get information on a confidential operation from your station secretary just by calling. If you really don't remember, it might be better to keep this one forgotten. It happened a while ago. It's an important to our business in Martinez now. But it's important to me. Kim, are you a follower of DeLoreanism? Yes, we all are. Her name, body, and rule are synonymous with humanism. The laws we enforce are DeLorean in origin. Hmm. Stroke your chin. I didn't think you were spiritual? It's not spiritual. It's constitutional. The DeLorean system does not demand faith. Only accordance. Turn away. Interesting. Um... I didn't... Yes, what is it? I didn't see that give me a new task. Have you seen anyone suspicious? A woman named Ruby? What? No. No one's suspicious around here. She has not seen her, sire. It is true. It's not a paying job, but could you help me contact Coalition Worship Archer? Do I look like someone who has time for side projects at this moment? She doesn't even look up from her computer. If you want her help, maybe you should help her first. Okay. Well, uh, um, the question's still read. It's true. The drug fiends have made themselves quite comfortable. But I still have a great deal of work to do. This project is immensely important to her. She's not going to help you until it's finished. If you're desperate for collaborators now, I suggest you ask your new friends. They seem to have plenty of time for side projects. Mm. Can Kim help me talk to this guy? The clothes. True, hard, full, car. Hard car. Hard car to the mega. Here comes the night. Oh, hey, man. It's good to 
see you. <sighs> um, I still can't. Goodbye, officer. I don't think changing my clothes didn't help last time. Yeah, I don't know what I need for him, and I need to check someone else too. Yo, man, what's on your mind? Conceptualization. Could you use your sign sense to help me contact a coalition worship? Trying to get aligned with the big bad, are ya? Those are some serious frequencies you want to mess with. Come on, Noid. I think we owe him. Asel's right. He's one of us now. Yeah, all right. But if you're going to sync up with them, you're going to need a serious wave generator of your own. You understand what I'm saying? What about the radio relay tower at Land's End? Is that serious enough? Not likely. Scoped that spot a while back. It's shortwave stuff. Mostly commercial. Plus, it's all rusted air. Build it ourselves! We built this nightclub! We can build anything! Could we build a radio transmitter ourselves? Yeah, maybe. Tech-wise, radio's not the spookiest thing around. Our part's finding an antenna big enough to align with those mega low frequencies. An antenna hardcore enough to shake the whole world! Maybe not that big, but pretty big. <sighs> Come up with a site, conceptualization, acquainted with a local landmark. And I need conceptualization for here too. Okay, let me check my clothes first. Maybe that'll help somehow. Yo, man. What's on your mind? That helped. Close your <sighs> eyes. Unfold your mental map of Martinez. It's morning. You're standing on the plaza before the whirling in rags. The wind pushes a piece of tear across the cracked tiles. From the north comes the malicious laughter of two children. Turn to face the bay. Your eye follows the tiles west. You see a bench and a few twisted, pitiful trees. Then, just water. From behind you, a low, spectral voice whispers, Nay. That's not the answer. Turn to face the apartments. Beyond the unkempt backyard rises a monstrous assemblage of concrete, plaster, and corrugated sheet metal. The voice again, more urgent now. Nay, just a moment. That voice isn't human, and it's not saying nay. It's saying nay. Like a horse? Turn to face the traffic circle? You turn around. The morning sun is blinding. You bring your hand to your brow, and a great shadow materializes before you. A towering beast. Frozen in mid-air. The statue of Felipe the Third? Centaur Man is made of metal. With the right gear, we could make it work. Huh. Yeah! Connect the centaur to the lorries! Unite the whole roundabout in hardcore waves! Oh my god. Huh? Sounds like Egg saying you could use some of the spare cables to rig up the stalled motor lorries and increase the wavelength which would pretty much make the old roundabout one giant antenna. Oh my god. One roundabout! One wavelength! Hardcore! Maybe after I connect these I can finally talk to him? We shall call it the Herald of Destruction. Are you sure that's legal? I feel like I'm gonna need to apologize to someone. Herald of Destruction! Pretty hardcore. Maybe it would be better to go with something more positive. Okay. We have the amps! We have the cables! We're almost ready! Yeah! It's right. All we're missing now is the transceiver itself. Soon as you find one, we'll be all set. Where do I find a transceiver? I don't know. Buy one? Steal one? I don't know your cop ways. Where do I buy one? And before you ask, no, you can't have the radio from my kinema. <laughs> you know what, kid? We'll find an even better radio. Point to Egghead. Doesn't he have something we could use? Can't do it. We just got this place set up. Can't go risking Egg's most important equipment. Do radio computers have transceivers in them? Yeah, probably. 
thing is, you'd have to be an engineer to get it out. I'd stick with regular radios if I were you. I think I saw a radio in that office near the harbour. Hmm. Some equipment from Arbor could work. Worth the legwork at least. Is that the office we were in, or is he talking about something else? Guess I need to find one then. While you're gone, me and Egg will get the rest of the gear together. Meet us back here when you got it. All right. Can I talk to Egg? Vic Klaus. Are we though? True, hard, full, hardcore. Yeah! This young man adds a chemical. Uh-huh. Oh, maybe it. The what? Yeah! He missed one. It's nice to. All right, all right. Where am I gonna. said the office near the harbor is is this the harbor because the office i'm um, the only other place where an office might be is a doomed commercial building um oh, oh oh i have money now i wanted to buy alcohol from you Ooh, and cigarettes darn it well i might as well buy the cigarettes the legend he's back I need and this my kind of guy here you go, friend. I wanted to buy this so I could get more stories. Do I have... Oh, whoops, question. The legend! He's back! Hi, by amphetamine, I mean speed. Oh. I thought by speed you meant amphetamine? Hi, it's what I said. Right, got it. Good, good, my man. <laughs> now what can I... Okay. <laughs> Tequila Sunset. Ooh. Okay, uh... Yeah, could you guys sign this document? What's it about? Uh, I'll let my hand address the situation. Maybe you've heard. I used to be a very successful businessman. Mm -hmm. I've signed more than a few lease forms or whatever the fuck they were. Anyone's got a pen? The pro's gonna do it. I, I, I have a pen. All right. You're not allowed to keep it, okay? He grabs the pen and paper and carefully scribbles on the dotted line next to Lillian's signature. Idiot Tomb Spiral! I need at least two signatures. Hey, Abs! Hey, Abs! Abs is gonna do it! Don't ya? You cool, have a go! I need you to sign this document right here. It's important. He waves the paper and pen in front of the man's face. Down corner. His trembling hand catches the paperwork. He lays it out on his knee and starts writing slowly. The handwriting is almost illegible <laughs> due to shaky hands. Perfect. It looks like a signature. Don't call Abaqua. Oh, he actually signed that? <sighs> Great job, Abs. Nailed it. He hands it back to you. Can I have the pen back too, please? Don't know if I've mentioned it, but I used to be a businessman. Uh-huh. And as a businessman, I am going to keep the pen. No. For my trouble. I like the pen. You've done a great service to the village, to the RCM, and to Revishal. Hey, guys. We're heroes. He raves, He waves his hand erratically to the other guys. About fucking time, man. I've done my duty. Dark all, Abigail. He snorts and takes a swig from his bottle. The bottle's empty. Thank you for your services, gentlemen. Should we go and mail these? I think I saw a mailbox on the plaza. Oh, great. Cool. I have a few more uh, questions first. Okay. What's on your mind? I don't know if I have any more alcohol for you. Wonderful. <laughs> so, I think... All right. I've got some Commodore Red. Oh, Strike strike Brew the Union uses. Okay. I don't think I need it. Sure. Interesting. Ah, this is what they use to keep the working man going. Mm-hmm. The tale I'm about to tell you is an urban legend particular to Martinez. That said, I first heard it from a former bicycle courier in Koran. There are many variations on the basic story, and the details often conflict. What everyone agrees on is that nobody knows the exact nature or identity of... Th- the phenomenon. Are you telling the story of the headless? Shut the fuck up, Rosemary. <laughs> <clears throat> Summer of 44. 17-year-old Gertrude Hett 
is walking home from a late shift at the harbor. It's almost midnight. She stops for a cigarette near the canal. The streets are warmed by a southerly breeze. The lights of a passing motor carriage bloom and fade in the distance. In the harbor's dark, her cigarette is a beacon, dancing alone. The image comes to you effortlessly, as though you'd walked the same streets yourself a thousand times. Our heroine finds herself enjoying the peace and quiet the canal provides. He looks up to the skies as if searching for peace himself. What she doesn't know is that her peace is about to be shattered. From behind her comes the clattering of hooves. Startled, she turns around, and what does she see? Horse? Well, yes, but it's the man on the horse that's of interest here. A man... The pause is long and dramatic. With no head on his shoulders. Wearing a foul tracksuit, searching for the legendary found cap that went missing hmm. when he lost his head. Wait, I thought the headless found rider rode a bull. Show him the figurine. I thought that he rode a headless pig. <laughs> well, there are many versions of this story, the most peculiar of which has the headless found rider riding on the back of another headless man. That sounds pretty implausible to me. If I hadn't lost my keys that one time, I'd agree with you. But life is a cruel mistress. He takes a sip. Gertrude Hett may have been the first to witness the headless found rider, but she wasn't the last. Oh, no. Tell him about the two feminists by the locks. Fuck, Rosemary. They were dating. No one said they were feminists. Everyone always misremembering this stuff. Hmm. This wouldn't be the Deponte Delgado case, would it? What? You know it. I've read the case file. But please, go on. Right. <clears throat> Early autumn of 46. Ulla Depont and Eva Delgado are fishing near the waterlock long after the sun has set. The wind picks up. A sky already dark now blackens. Water starts falling from above. The first cold rain of the season. Two women stand on a small outcropping of rocks. One of them is wearing a purple raincoat. Thin lines reach out from the rods into the sea. Small droplets start appearing on the surface with increasing frequency. The women are caught in the downpour. They act quickly. Eva gathers the rods whilst Ulla turns around to reach for the tackle box. Don't turn around. Don't turn around. <laughs> when she sees something, her shriek is so violent that the residents of the nearby apartment building believe lightning has struck. But there is no lightning. Only a heavy downpour and the silhouette of the headless Falm Rider looming on the horizon. Ulla makes a run for the shore, but Eva slips on a wet rock and disappears into the cold, cold canal with nary a sound. Oh no. Her body is never recovered. What did the case file say? Ask him. Naturally, Ulla de Ponte became the prime suspect in the disappearance of Eva Delgado. De Ponte maintained that it was the so-called headless fallen rider and that she ran fearing for her life. He adjusts his glasses. During the investigation, it became apparent that there was a love triangle, the third party being some small-time businessman. I don't remember the exact details. <laughs> the leading theory was that an argument broke out on the jetty and De Ponte pushed Delgado into the canal, then cooked up this stupid cover story. Was she arrested? No. She committed suicide before she could be taken into custody. Aww. They found her in the bathroom with a rifle, her face slowly peeling off the ceiling. I didn't need that description, Kim. Not a pretty scene. No. Man, that's some grisly detail. Oh well. Here's to another case closed. He takes a hearty swig from his bottle. Anyway, that's the story of the headless foul rider. Pretty crazy, huh? Who was the writer before he died? Well, Tequila, that's part of the legend. No one knows for sure. There are a couple of possibilities, though. 
Some say he was an undercover cop who blew his cover and got beheaded by the vicious gang he had infiltrated. Now he rides, searching for his lost found cap, plotting revenge. Oh, headless brother, where art thou? <laughs> Others claim he was a professional jockey who veered off course during a steeplechase, ended up in somebody's backyard, and got decapitated by an exceptionally taut clothesline. Personally, I think he was just some guy who hanged himself from a really tall tree and the fall was so violent that his head came clean off. Oof. Coincidentally, at that exact moment, a horse happened to pass under him and his beheaded corpse mounted it, where it remains to this day. But then, no one really knows. That's your theory? For some reason, this does strike you as the most plausible theory of them all. Really? I like the undercover cop story. I'd want revenge too. Betty was the jockey. He seems super committed to the sport. Your theory sounds the most plausible. I don't really like any of them, but I'm gonna pick... I like... Let's go with jockey. No, let's go with the undercover cop. That would explain the tracksuit and his need for revenge. Not sure how the horse fits in, though. <laughs> I don't know. I, I don't buy it. He shrugs. Anyway, to each his own. You want to hear any other stories? Already seen some weird shit on this case. A headless jockey in a tracksuit fits right in. Hard to argue is that, I suppose. That's the reality situation for you. You think you got a handle on it, then blam! It throws some wild shit at you. Ah. <sighs> That's why it's critical to stay well hydrated. Okay, but I've got an even crazier story. Yeah? Why don't you go eat shit, Tequila? There's no way you know a better one than that. Coldamama Dakwa, the Gnome Jeroma dissolves its victims in acid. I like that one. Acid Gnome? <laughs> Sounds like a stupid, low-concept band name. Alright, what, whatever became of the headless Fallen Rider? No one knows. Some say he stalks Martinez to this day and can be seen near the canal when the clock strikes midnight. He makes a spooky gesture with his free hand. He won't, though, because it's just a stupid legend. I, I saw him one night when I was right shit face. <laughs> you got any more? I actually do have one. The strangest of them all. But I'll need to fortify myself before I can tell that one. Do you have anything to fortify old Doom Spiral? Tell me you got some story juice. 